Good morning, it is 6 a.m. here and I have the van all packed and I am about to leave the farm, which feels weird for a vlog, seeing how every one of these build videos I realize have been on the farm. I will be returning in this episode, but first I'm gonna go and meet with Chris, who is a professional van converter and custom woodworker. It's a two hour drive to get there, I better get going. So I have made it to Chris's workshop and it is beautiful out here. I have actually brought a bit of the farm with me. No, it's not one of the sheep, but this was my grandpa's jacket that I found in the cupboard. It is zero degrees and 9 a.m. Chris. Howdy, how are you? So you, everyone, this is Chris. He's the main man behind Peachwood Co. And you've been doing what, van conversions for a couple of years? Yeah, been, yeah a couple of years we've been sort of um, just doing empty van conversions, transforming them into people's homes and stuff like that. So. Yeah. yeah, and he's done an Iveco before, which is good because not yeah. many people have. I will show you some of the results he's got from the past ones because they are so beautiful and I really love his style. Is Poppy going to be helping us out with the build? Yeah, she is. Yeah, she's always site manager. So Chris is out there ripping down some of the kickers for the cupboards. And I have to say, kickers, even though I know it's a normal concept for building cabinetry, is a new one for me in the van because I built kind of very, <laughs> I really made up my own way with the last van. And although they looked good, they didn't really look like professional cabinets. And that's the look I'm going for this time. And I'll just show you the progress that we've made so far. So these are the kickers that are going to form the base for the clothing cupboard and electronics over here. And then this is the kicker that's going to be the base for where my fridge is going to be stored. And that is going to be some kind of different storage. So the front section kickers are done. And Chris is about to cut into... Is this the first time you've used this material, Chris? Uh, once before. Once before. And what's yeah. it called? It's called Mitch Light. It's a 16 mil um, PVC foam core board. It works out to be about seven kilo, seven or eight kilos lighter per sheet than, than your standard malamine. And it's fully waterproof, right? Fully waterproof and yeah, lightweight option. For How much is it a sheet? This is about a hundred dollars a sheet. Yeah. So you don't want to f*** up the cut. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> It started off with probably the biggest fridge slide drawer. The idea is the whole fridge is going to slide out. I've got drawer runners coming that hold 227 kilos. So technically you could potentially sit on the fridge and make it an extra part of the couch. So it is really turning into van build HQ out here because we've just had Brett drop by who is actually from, oh, sorry, the sun's right in your face there, Brett. There, perfect, there we go. So Brett is actually the founder, inventor, yes, creator, yes, all the, genius all from RV Labs products. And RV Labs make these door handles that are locking and one of a kind, wouldn't you say? They are one of a kind, first world first. And unfortunately, Eamon and Beck just beat me to the punch. I talked to Brett about these handles a little bit ago and apparently, They'd already gotten to you first. Yeah, they right? went live this morning. Yeah, with handles no one watches their so videos anyway. No, don't watch. Go for it, man. Um, yeah, these are the my pool latches. I just wanted something a bit neater and a bit nicer and a bit more modern than what's available. And this is what I came up with. Really easy to use. 
that's them open as you can see when you pull the latch so show that again so you push it shut and then it locks shut. so and that drawer is fully locked pull that oh i see when you pull it out it pulls the lock down Yep. It's so smart. After driving for two years using Oki straps to hold all our <laughs> doors closed, this is going to be a big upgrade for me, so I'm very excited. Thanks a lot, Brett. I no didn't worries. go the brass. They do look fantastic. What colour did Eamon get? They got matte black, and uh, you've gone the stainless steel. Stainless steel is the way to go. I will link Brett's products below and your Instagram page, right? Yeah, absolutely. Get on Instagram. You see pictures of everyone who's doing cool stuff with my handles. <laughs> Good morning. So I kind of lost you all last night because we all had a beer and kind of just chatted about vans quite, <laughs> quite a lot. But we did make progress and Chris is doing a killer job. I'm going to give you a quick update in the kitchen and then show you where we're at now. So this is the carcasses for the kitchen cabinets and they are going in beautifully. And now Chris is just prepping the carcass for this side of the couch slash half the bed. So I just need to make a few adjustments because I've got to essentially cut holes for my wires so they fit through better and then it'll sit flush against the wall. But you know, a lot of people are against this kind of design with the walkthrough because you lose the garage but this is a lot of storage space like you think of all the storage in there and then all the storage in this side there's a ton so chris is trying currently trying to figure out probably the hardest part really is it why we've left it till last yeah i think so it's the hardest part of all the floor cabinetry and that is the surfboard floor to ceiling cupboard This is it, Chris. You can feel it. Please, please. Scrub, so it, scrub it off at the back a bit. Tell you what. For a carcass piece. It's like it was made for that space. <laughs> you sure you don't want to help me with the rest of the build, mate? <laughs> You're too busy. That's the problem. Too busy. Have a look at this. And as Chris pointed out, the best part is because we've used the Mitch light, which is the, it's all fully waterproof. So if the surfboards were to, you know, drip a little bit. I'm going to put a plastic tray in the bottom anyway, but if this gets wet, it's not going to swell or anything. That's going to stay solid as is. All right, it is starting to rain. Chris has given himself a dust off because he actually has to rush to get to the chiropractor now. We got a ton done and I'm so happy. And I just want to quickly say that I'm so grateful to Chris. He is super busy at the moment with van conversions and his custom carpentry. And he took the time out because he wanted to give me a hand. And a lot of people have been commenting saying with seeing my videos about how much work it is and you know, they'd pay to get it done. And all I can say is there's such a difference between getting a custom conversion by someone like Chris as opposed to getting one off the line that's kind of mass produced. Just giving you a little pump up there, Chris, because I think you deserve it. How early would they need to book you if they wanted you to? I'm currently booked out for about two, two to three months sort of thing at the moment. Yeah. So, but I, I do have a lot of tentatives booked in and all that sort of stuff as well. Yeah, it, it is filling up fast and everyone wanting to travel around Australia. So if you do want to get something done, get in quick. And, all I can say, and so he should be. I'm going to put his Instagram right here. Is that the best way to contact yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. Instagram or, or through the contact page on my website. Yeah, so message him on there. He'll get back to you. Chris, legend. Good on you, man. Enjoy the Cairo. Thanks, mate. <laughs>
Good morning. So as you have just seen, we have made it back to the farm. It is now Friday and it is one of those days that is just not warming up. It's 11 a.m. and it's pretty bloody cold still. So you'll hear the heater on in the back of the van. I've got that warming up ready for another day's work. I did just take a couple of days off after those two days doing the cabinetry with Chris. You know, I felt like with how much we got done and how big a couple of weeks I'd had, I kind of I kind of felt like I'd earned it, so I went down to the beach with friends and finally got back in the water, which was so nice. And you know, I've said it before, but for me, the ocean is kind of like my meditation. So a busy couple of days ahead, let's get into it. Okay, so first on the to-do list is to install this Kamek instant hot water heater. So it runs off the gas or the propane from the van and it is pretty big as you can see. So once again, I have to cut quite a large hole in the side of the van. And the reason that I hadn't done it till now, which I still don't know if it was the right decision or not, but essentially I wanted to sit really snug inside the cabinetry on that far wall. And as I go to cut into the wall, I want to address the weekly question or comment. And this week, a few people put it out there that after I was mentioning how my tools were kind of dying, that I should go after a sponsorship with, you know, DeWalt or Makita or Milwaukee. But after the last video, I just happened to get a message pop into my DMs from an absolute legend who is the distributor for MPT Tools. And he essentially just said, look, I really enjoy your content. Happy to give you some tools. I'd require zero promotion. Just, you know, use them and go for them. But, you know, stuff that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promote him because what a legend and I'm so grateful. And I have to say the tools I've used so far from theirs has been bloody awesome. So if you notice some red and black MPT tools getting around, that's where they've come from. So thank you, mate. All right, here we are. The question is, did I A, max it, meaning that the hole is too small? Did I B, aim in it, meaning that the hole is too big? Or did I C, finally learn from past lessons and just bloody nail this one? So I'm really happy with how that sits in there. It's gone in nice and flush and as tempted as I am now to permanently seal up that hole from the outside, while I've got access to this space, I'm going to aim for the next thing on my list. I've kind of covered it up a bit, but if you look around the rim of where the hot water heater is going in, I've added some ply all around the corners there and that is to give the screws something to bite into when I drill through. I've also added layers of insulation and sound deadener and everything in this area where there wasn't any. Added car builders to the wheel wells because they were a little bit squeaky and I just didn't want that. And now, no squeak. And also, I figured I may as well insulate under the kickers. It's probably overkill. But, you know, there's 60 mil of space there. And I'm just securing them in place with the good old-fashioned sicker. Should go in. Like so. So I'm just gonna finish insulating over those last two and then call it a night for the van because I actually have a very important video editing project going on tonight. Tomorrow is mum, Jano's 
birthday and it is the big six zero. I'm sure she won't mind me telling you that, but she's turning 60 and because of the corona situation, we aren't able to catch up in person this time. It's a bit of a bummer because it's a big milestone. I know mum's gonna watch this obviously on Sunday or, or when I get it out. So I wanna say again, mum, happy birthday. I know everyone thinks their mum is the best mum in the world, but you truly are. And for anyone watching, if you wanna wish mum a happy birthday, she definitely reads the comments. So please do so below. Okay, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good afternoon. It is one of those days that I cannot believe that it is afternoon already. Today is flying after spending this morning working on mum's project and then I thought it'd be a very quick job just tying off the electrical for the exhaust fan and light above the shower area but it turns out that that area is just a nightmare in terms of it's very hard to get into that space and also the wiring that's used on the exhaust fan and light there is so thin so I ended up having to be super delicate with it and eventually just twisted it and put some liquid electrical tape over and heat shrunk it which I was initially planning on soldering it but there was just no space to get in there and so I figured before I was able to tick that one off the list it's only fair that I test it at the other end to make sure I've actually wired it correctly. Okay, so here I have the wires coming back from my exhaust fan and it's ran over a six meter length, so quite a long length. If I have my wiring correct, the white should be the negative, the red should be for the fan positive, and this brown should be for the light positive. Let me first try the fan. Success. And now I'll try the light. So obviously with me drilling the hole for the shower vent, it has arrived and I ended up getting changing to this closable one. Because I'm now putting it on the wall, I thought it would be important that it can close and it says this one's good for wet areas. So the idea is that I remember to actually close it when I'm having a shower, whether that happens in reality or not, we'll see. I don't suppose one of you want to come over and give me a hand with this. It turns out this twist on connector at the back is very hard to do when you cannot hold it from the front and I uh, just can't reach. Uh, uh, you able to hold, is that holding it or? Yeah, I'm able to hold it. It's, okay. it's working fine. Well, that turned out to be a bit of a nightmare to install mainly because it's such a narrow space to get that vent in on the back. Dad ended up being the savior and getting it on. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, thanks for your help, Dad. You're welcome. Have a good raven Saturday night with Judy. <laughs> <laughs> well, try not to overdo it, Mac. Have fun. Thanks. So considering it is Saturday night, who is ready to putty? That's right, putty. Uh, that is what I am gonna be doing for my Saturday night. And if you wonder whether I have a life whilst I build out this van, the answer is no, pretty much not. Good morning. It is the first really beautiful non-freezing morning in quite a few days. And wow, it just, to be honest, it makes you feel so much better and so much more motivated to get into the build. I did not get any of the filler in last night because I ended up on a family call. So I am attacking it first thing this morning. I'm gonna put my headphones in, listen to my audiobook, and just enjoy the process. Oh
Whew, that is the last one, I think. I've double checked a couple of times. Of all the holes, that took ages. I find with wood filler, I'm using this Timbermate white wood putty. And it, I've used it before and I've found that it's a bit of a fine line between you either scrape off too much and then when you go to sand it back it, it re-exposes the hole. Or you the other way is leaving on too much that you've got to sand a lot back. So I've tried to not leave too much. This one looks like I've left a lot. But yeah, it's, it's getting that balance. I don't really want to do that again. So... I'm going to give it a little bit more time to dry, sand it all back, prime it again with the primer, and then paint it all again. So I don't think this video is coming to you Sunday, hopefully in the next day or two. I've got to wait for everything to dry. These are sanding back beautifully. I think that key was really to get a bit of extra putty on there because it does sand back really easily. All right, I'm going to get a mask on because I think this is going to be a lot of sanding. Get back into it. Well, that sucked. I really hope I do not have to do that again for a while. But I have sanded now pretty much every single one. There's a couple that I missed, so, so they're just drying and I'll be doing those. But I'll give you a look. Some of them came out really nice. Like, that's going to paint over really well. I've decided I am going to re-prime the whole thing and then repaint it, which will mean it will then have five layers of paint on it. I'm going to have some dinner and then maybe start prepping for painting. Primer coat is done. Okay, time for round two. And finally, the top coat is done and it is absolutely looking schmick. So I'm very happy with it. I'm happy I took the time to do it properly. I am going to let it dry. I'll go for lunch. And I know I've added, in the end, I kind of added a few items to the list. Before I could put the cabinets back in. But really, I think that was a smart move because I didn't have to worry about painting around them all or dripping any paint. And I would like to kind of put the gas box in and then really end this video with a just a nice look at how all the cabinetry is going to look in place with a beautifully painted van. Hopefully that can happen soon. Okay, so the gas hot water heater is sitting in the position I want and it is almost completely level on both sides it's a millimeter out on here but you know what we call those people hey judy
That's going good. I've pretty much finished painting everything and I'm about to sick of flex this in now. Oh, you've painted already? Yeah, I've painted everything. Oh, you're pretty amazing. Yeah. Max, oh my. Yeah, it's a bit of a unit, isn't That's it? That's a bit of an internal organ, isn't it? Yeah. That looks fabulous. Oh, you're doing it such so well. Oh, thank you. How are you going with your blog? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just chipping away. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I think it's going to be long and erratic. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And oh, Jude. I'm using the marine grade one again. And so I'm gonna sick a flex all around there. And, and as you can see here, there's a bit more of a gap between the van wall and here. So I'm just gonna really stuff that with sick flex and then I'll be tightening all the screws up and it'll kind of push it out and it'll be nice and watertight. Are you ready for the ooze? Oh. And this, my friends, is why you use the masking tape. Now you all know what time it is. Wet finger technique time. And just like that, the cabinets are in and touch wood. They are not coming out again. They were a bit of a bitch to get back in here, to be honest. I had to pack them a bit and really kind of work it so I could get them nice and straight and they're fixed to the walls. But I'm super happy with the end result. And I hope you guys will agree, the van is coming up an absolute treat. You know, I've been really kind of patient with this build and taking my time. And there's some points where I want to pull my hair out but for the most part I'm very happy with how it's going and I'm just I'm excited that it's starting to feel like a home it even it's sounding a lot more dense I don't know if you can hear the difference in my voice when it's all shut up now but I think that insulation along with everything in here it's going to be quieter and quiet as a mouse coming up I want to say a huge thank you to Chris for helping me with the cabinets. It was something that I didn't really have much of an idea how to make, but now I feel like I can go forward. And just that two days help made a big difference. If you're interested in getting a van conversion in Australia, I couldn't recommend it more highly. To be honest, I have no idea how this video is going to turn out. I haven't looked at any of the footage at all, and it's now been over a week span. So hopefully I can put it all together. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And for the patrons out there, don't forget we're doing a live stream tomorrow. If you're not a patron, this could be a good time to sign up. All right, I'll see you next week.